Ferrari at breakfast. Call 0345 6060 973. Ten minutes before eight is the time. Back to our conversation about doctors in a moment. But let's get on to these headlines. Worrying headlines in many instances about shortage and looking at some supermarket shelves which are appearing a little bit bare, but the government taking action, it would appear. Conservative MP and Transport Secretary Grant Shapps joins me now. A word that many of my listeners don't yet know, but you're going to explain to them. Uh, in 60 seconds or less, cabotage, Transport Secretary. What exactly is that? Good morning. Morning. Yeah, it's a transport uh, term originally from the French, uh, which uh, it basically means that when somebody comes here, in this case, in a HGV, in a lorry, to deliver uh, some goods here, uh, they are then allowed to, using cabotage, uh, pick up other loads and drop them off and carry on doing so uh, under the rule changes we're making for a maximum of 14 days domestically before they must return uh, to wherever they came from overseas. That is cabotage. It's the ability to pick up and drop off uh, within the domestic market. When will the relaxations kick in? Before the end of the year, uh, and it's yet another uh, measure that we're taking to uh, try to ease the supply chain uh, squeeze, which is very much a global thing. We've got uh, every uh, country in the world seemingly uh, with a squeeze coming out of coronavirus uh, and the expansion of the economy going on. None more so, it should be said, than in the UK, where we're the fastest growing G7 country this year. Uh, And that means that there's a big premium on people like lorry drivers right now. Before the end of the year, there there are troubling headlines that you'll be aware about supplies for Christmas. Shouldn't we try and bring it in before the end of next week? Uh, we have to change laws, and I'm afraid they take uh, time to do. Um, but this is one of the one of very many. It will be in place before Christmas, uh, and it will be giving a hand, therefore. But it's only one of 25 measures that we've taken to ease the path of HGV drivers and it's working we've got three times as many hgv drivers applying for the provisional licenses every single day now than before the coronavirus uh, hit back in 2019 so we're getting more domestic lorry drivers that's a very good thing they've been undercut for years and we haven't had a, enough people coming into this market uh, and that means that we've been reliant on importing overseas uh, people to drive lorries here which means that people weren't being paid the proper price here we want a higher wage higher skill economy and we think it's a, a good thing to see those salaries uh, rise so that people get a decent uh, you know amount of money for a day's work did the relaxation of the eu drivers working in the uk that came about has that borne fruit how many drivers do we have on our roads so uh, we, we we've actually we, we actually have a lot of uh, eu drivers and non-eu drivers but from elsewhere on our roads uh, but primarily because they're coming here anyway to deliver things so uh, what i'm describing today doesn't require a visa and the visa route isn't the route a that we want to go and, and b is not um, the, the, the 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 sort of uh, the answer to our uh, our problems. But we so, did try it, didn't we, a couple of weeks ago? We did, yeah, we, we, of course, you'll recall, we had some recall. of the road uh, haulage organisations calling for, telling us this was the only answer. Well, you know, listeners will have noted that the, the petrol station queues have been dealt with, uh, but it hasn't. No, the answer hasn't really been uh, importing uh, uh, workers to do jobs that actually Brits can do and for a pop- proper day's wage are very happy to do as right. well. So the problem is we're, we're seeing it resolved through the 25 different measures that we've taken and this cavatage will be another assistance but uh, but but how, but how very, many overseas yeah. drivers did we attract do you know how many we actually added to our fleet uh, very very few i mean i think that the the uh, the, the number. tanker driver um the tanker drivers in particular was was uh, a particular uh, a particular interest as you recall because right. of the, the I mean, cues we were seeing but 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 we're, 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 you know just dozens not hundreds not right. thousands and so, we don't and we and we always said actually we don't think this is the answer. Uh, we, Why did the, you do it then, if it wasn't the answer? Well, the haulage associations were insisting that it was. Oh, the, I see. So the, the haulage answer. associations tell the government what to do now, do they? No, uh, you know, far, far, far from it. Oh. But well, why did you do it then? Me, let me get a word in here. Go I think ahead, it's sir. right. To, <laughs> I think it's right that you test every avenue, isn't it? If you've got something like this happening, you want to have a look uh, at whether you don't want to leave any stone unturned. We've turned that stone. It's not the solution. Uh, that the haulage, uh, some in haulage thought it was, actually the solution, as we've always thought, is to train up British workers to do the job. And 25 measures that we've taken to streamline getting an HGV licence uh, have meant that we're seeing three times as many people apply. Uh, we've now got spaces for people to do the test, which was the other big concern after coronavirus. Uh, tens of thousands of lorry drivers couldn't take their 
tests to get their lorry license, uh, we now have space. So I have 615 test space available this week uh, for people who want to uh, pass their HGV tests. Uh, it's the first time we've had real capacity in the system for a long time, uh, and it means we get more domestic drivers. I, I guess I'm sort of drilling down to numbers because you'll be aware that we're seeking for EU meat workers or butchers uh, to come to this country around 800 to try and avert the pig culling crisis. Um, why would they want to come here? It wasn't a great success with HGV drivers. Why will it work with butchers? Well, there are different schemes, and there's always been a, a tradition of having um, sort of temporary seasonal workers uh, come to this country. There are there are already this is an existing visa scheme, uh, which is uh, people are already already eligible uh, under, and we do see uh, larger numbers of people come to, uh, you know, for example, work in seasonal picking. In this case, uh, to assist with um, butchers uh, for visas on a temporary uh, basis for six months. But it's not the only. Uh, part of the package again on on the pig well, industry being announced today is also government funded storage aid scheme uh, remember, for sorts of pigs uh, and a pork levy holiday as right well. remembering when i asked you a few weeks ago or a week or two ago when you last got petrol for your car and you told me that you had an electric car you're probably going to be turning out now to be a vegetarian but do you think you'll have turkey should you so desire and pigs and blankets on your christmas I, table i'm far from a saint when it comes to th th these things but uh, but but the electric car is something that, yes yes uh, but, but you'll probably turn out to be a vegetarian will there be sausages and turkey for christmas mr Sher? yes there will be uh, I'm, I'm not turning out to be a vegetarian and uh, we'll all have our christmas meals you're safe you we can we, rest safe we on will them. and look i think we have to be very careful not to sort of try to okay. report ourselves into a crisis. I, I, I was looking yesterday at the headlines about uh, Felixstowe, where a single ship was rerouted by Maersk, who are the world's biggest shipping line. And Felixstowe is our biggest port. I, I, I've um, you know, been in touch with both, both Maersk uh, frequently, I mean, as, as part of doing business, uh, divert ships all the time. In fact, they're diverting far more from European uh, ports like Le Havre and uh, elsewhere. Uh, there's, there's nothing exceptional or unusual at all about a single ship being diverted. I spoke to Felixstowe last night. They were telling me at any one time there may be a ship waiting to get into port. Uh, that compares with 60 ships okay. waiting to get into the Los Angeles port. There is a global supply squeeze, but actually uh, we're handling it pretty robustly in this country. Uh, we will have our, our, our goods for Christmas. And I have to say, compared with where we were last year, where... Our concerns were that we'd be able to see friends and family at Christmas during the height of coronavirus. We we're in a considerably better position this year. Just coming back to drivers, you were probably aware of the report last week that said there might be as many as 4,000 HGV drivers who are waiting for their paperwork. These are new drivers coming online to be processed by DVLA, where around 40% of staff are behind their desks and 60% of staff are not behind their desks. And accessing medical data is not something you can always do from your home. How acceptable is it we've only got 40% staff at DVLA, Secretary of State? Yeah, just let me correct um, that story that you uh, read last week about the 4,000 uh, applications. Uh, I mentioned that uh, we've got three times as many people applying. That's about 1,000 people a day. So uh, actually, uh, if anything, uh, we have massively sped up the speed at which people are getting provisional licences, which is what that number was about. Right. It's the people who have applied for HGV licences. We're turning them around in... Uh, less than five days, uh, and uh, that includes doing medical checks. So, uh, so actually, it's a much faster service than people will have experienced. So, you before. don't mind There's... only forty percent of staff at DVLA? No, no. But, but I think I think it's really important to, um, uh, of course, for people who need to be in front of those databases that can't be accessed from home because of privacy reasons, or need to be physically handling those documents to be able to be in work to do that. Um, and, and and we have seen people return to, to work. DVLA has been subject to a very lengthy strike, I'm afraid to say, over the period of coronavirus. Uh, and, um, and and I think that's very regrettable. I, I don't think there's any good reason um, for that. There were a lot of health and safety measures put in place during that period, including allowing people to work from, right. from home. Uh, and I hope that strike comes to an end now. Last couple of points. Insulate Britain are going to give us a suspension of their protests, which we all celebrate. They've written an open letter to uh, your boss, the Prime Minister. Uh, the campaign of civil resistance will be stopped. Um, as of October 25th, when they might come back online, they say that your government is loath to put people in jail to coincide with a COP conference. Are they right? 
Well, governments don't put people in jail. The courts to practice laws, you know what I'm saying. And they, and they do on. that when injunctions are, are broken. Uh, I have to say, uh, I think drivers will agree with me. What they're doing is pathetic, dangerous, irresponsible, counterproductive. And the fact that they then apologise to drivers for the delay, distress they're causing is absolutely unacceptable. You know, I've seen a van driver who lost his job because he was an hour late on TV. I saw a, a, an HGV driver who was trying to deliver fuel during the fuel uh, crisis the other week. Uh, a woman who was trying to visit her mum in hospital. Parents trying to get we, their kids to school. We had These a bloke who was off no to. Right we we had a guy who was off to insulate right. homes, and he was stopped by the protesters. So he was actually his job is to insulate homes, yeah. and he couldn't get to the houses. You couldn't. You couldn't make it up. And you know, stopping this till the twenty fifth. It, it is, Will people uh, go to jail uh, by obviously by legal process, not the government? Do you you're not loath to see some of these people put behind bars if they break injunctions? No, it, look, uh, the whole point about a uh, getting an injunction is that it means they're in uh, defiance of the court, contempt of the court, and the courts. Uh, I suspect will not take that kindly at all. So, uh, of course, people should go to jail if they continue to to do this. Over a hundred doors have been knocked on. Uh, injunctions have been physically served. Uh, more than a dozen people now are being taken back to court for contempt of court. And, of course, I wouldn't deign to tell the courts what to do. No, indeed. Uh, but I would certainly not be crying into my Weetabix if I... Right. If I uh, saw pretty strong action okay. taken, because there is no reason why law-abiding citizens L should be inconvenienced like this. Lastly, do you share the sentiments of the Queen about leaders and COP26 when say, she says that those who talk but don't do are so irritating? Well, look, I, I don't want to sort of be dragged into Queen's uh, private uh, comments over her. But uh, what I would say is that COP26, enormously important, taking place uh, next month. Uh, it will um, bring together under British leadership uh, vast parts of the, uh, the the global economy. And we know that very, very many leaders are, are coming from America to Europe and beyond. Uh, it's important that it's a success. And we'll, we'll, we'll wait to see who, exactly who's there but, come the day. Yeah, but just lastly, courtesy of your government, we're all meant to rinse our plates before we put them in the dishwasher. But you can't tempt President Xi from China to attend Glasgow. Why should they carry on washing their plate, pre-rinsing their plates? Well, look, uh, even uh, China, who people often um, cite uh, as being a laggard, have uh, made a number of moves, including uh, a, a date to, 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 to zero carbon <laughs> their economy. I, I think I'm right in saying and, uh, it, and certainly um, stopping to stopping investment or, or, or paying for coal stations overseas. Of course, we want them to go further. We all need to go further. Uh, but, you know, let's see who. Who, who, who comes? Let's wait and see the outcome of COP before we uh, before we mm. prejudge. Um, but I, I, I'm sure um, I, I, I'm sure it will be um, successful as long as we all approach it in the right spirit. Grateful for your time, Transport Secretary Grant Shapps appearing here on LBC, where the time is three minutes after eight. News is next. On your radio, on Global Player, and play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's Newsroom, the COVID testing procedure for people arriving